Every four core i7 is now e-waste. Right now, you can get a 10100F for $80. And it is basically that. It is a four core, eight thread i7 for $80. Another thing you should remember is there is a 10105F running around. So it was slightly updated halfway through the year. It's crap, don't worry about it. It's $7 more than this, and at $7 more, it's nearly 10%, and all it does is upclock about 100 megahertz. You're not gonna notice that, and especially for 10% more, $7 more, <laughs> just buy the cheap 10100F, and you're good to go. Yes, being an FSKU, you will need to buy a dedicated graphics card, but luckily, those are coming back in stock too. <laughs> don't bother getting a different cooler for this. At 65 watts, the Intel stock cooler is perfectly fine for it, and any money that you spend on a better cooler is completely wasted. It's not going to perform any better. If it does, it's going to be minuscule and it's not worth more than $20 that you're going to spend on a Hyper 212 Evo. If you want to put a Hyper 212 Evo or a 360mm cooler, that's on you, but it's not going to perform that much or any better. Don't worry about the fact that Intel kneecapped its ability to overclock RAM. Don't worry about it, it's $80, who cares? Just slap some RAM in that bad boy and you're off to the races. 2666, who cares? It might sound like I'm joking about this, but it's honestly hilarious. Like $80 for this much performance is unheard of. A, what, a Ryzen 3 3100 from just a year ago was $100. And that can't even touch this bad boy. <laughs> I mean, it can, it's relatively similar. It probably gets better power consumption, but this is going to win in gaming. You could do all kinds of overclocking to that, but we already know that that is relatively the same as an old i7, a 4790K. Overclocked and everything, they, they still perform relatively similar, but this is just a little bit better. And at $80, complete steal. So in case you're wondering, I did run benches of this versus a 6700K clocked at 4.3 gigahertz because that's as high as it boosts anyway. And weirdly enough, when I enabled the XMP, it just broke its ability to boost on its own. And honestly, as far as I can tell, they're the same. Within 100 points on Cinebench R23, within 10 FPS in almost every game I tested, except for Red Dead Redemption 2, where I think the fixed clock speed might have helped the 6700K. But all in all, it's about the same. And this with a 400 series motherboard, a 400 or a 500 series LJ1200 socket with the old DDR RAM, which is really kind of weird now that we're saying DDR RAM, DDR4 RAM is old. We've had DDR4 RAM since the 100 series socket. So Z170, H110, DDR4 has been around for a while now. I think at this point, everybody has a set of 3200 megahertz CL16 RAM that you can buy for $50 off of Amazon <laughs> or Newegg. Shoot, you could probably get it even cheaper off your local Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace now that people are upgrading to DDR5 RAM. Although I don't think a lot of people are quite yet given that, well, one, you'd have to upgrade to Alder Lake and... <laughs> There's some people who want to do that, but waiting until AMD 7000 series seems like the way to go, especially given that DDR5 RAM is really expensive right now. Not to mention that if you did want to buy a Z400 or 500 series motherboards, they aren't that expensive, comparatively speaking. Yes, they are more expensive than a i3 at $80, but you can upgrade all the way up to a 10 core i9, 10850K, 10900, 10900K, 10900KF, you know, the, the big boys, the big dogs that are honestly a great deal on their own. Like 10850K is only $300, which is quite a lot of CPU for $300. There's so many more CPUs that you can plug into any one of those 400 series boards. And even if your RAM isn't overclockable, if you only spent $500 on the RAM, 500 if you only spent $50 on the RAM anyway, you're not losing that much performance downclocking at a few hundred megahertz. Like the latency is really where it's at and it lets you set the latency anyway. All it does is downclock the RAM. I feel like a 6600 non-XT is the perfect pairing for this CPU given its relatively low $300 price range and its 
perfectly acceptable performance at that $300. <laughs> this CPU with a cheap board, some cheap RAM that you might already have or you can find used for super cheap anyway, set the XMP, toss whatever GPU you can get your hands on for $300, barring that it's actually a decent CPU or GPU for $300. Like, don't go out and buy a 1050 not TI for $300. Go find yourself a 1070 TI, a 1070, maybe even a six gigabyte 1060 because those cards are still relatively good. A 1080, 20 series, depending on which one you could find, maybe even a, a 2070 for, for $300 would be a good deal. And then of course you have your 30 series cards, which are brand new. You can get them with a warranty for less than or about 300 to $400. Granted the offset of <laughs> a really big GPU versus a really cheap rest of your system starts getting questionable. It won't bottleneck, <laughs> but maybe you don't need to spend all that money on it quite yet. This is perfect for giving to your kit, but this along with a $60 motherboard, $50 RAM, another at most $100 storage, a $50 PSU, a $50 case, and then a $150 to $300 GPU. Perfect. This is the eSports Annihilator. It'll get crazy frame rates in all of your eSports games. CSGO, Fortnite, what's that one racing game with the soccer ball? Valorant, Warzone if you have a good enough GPU. Obviously doing multiple tasks on only four core eight threads might start to bottleneck you where say having a streaming software open and talking with all your friends along with recording and Razor Synapse. Razor Synapse <laughs> along with your 8,000 DPI mouse, <laughs> which we've shown to hurt your frame rates. You could start to see some a few less frames, but for the most part in those games this is more than enough this is obviously not going to be a do-it-all pc this is a do one thing really well and that's game on the cheap you'll still be able to do all those other things but another cpu with more cores might be better like say a, an old an older ryzen 8 core processor will do more productivity than this but it will it won't keep up in gaming not there's not a chance that i can keep up in gaming <laughs> Another thing to remember is this is essentially Skylake times six. Like, it has been polished to the core. It, <laughs> if there's one thing Intel knows better than anything, it's building Skylake, and they work. They just work. Early Ryzen, you're gonna have your teething issues. You're gonna have that random USB disconnect sound and not know what just disconnected from your system. But with this, it's just gonna work. It's gonna be beautiful. It's gonna run slightly hotter than you expect. They finally started soldering instead of putting Intel brand toothpaste on them, but it's just gonna work. And at $80, it's, I can't not recommend it. So if this video has been incredibly confusing to you, go ahead and let us know in the comments. <laughs> if you wanna yell at me for being confusing, join our Discord. Get subscribed for fu future confusing processor videos. And like always, I'll see you next time.